All right, guys, so we're back from the range with the AK-556. Um, we hit a 1,000 rounds. I had recorded a video out there at the range, but it was just uh, too noisy. Hopefully, you saw at the beginning there, I put in some footage. That's uh, my 300-yard target, shooting it from a distance of 300 yards. I know I promised uh, that I would do some accuracy testing with it, but the winds were 25 gusting to 35. Um, it just wouldn't have been fair to the rifle to do accuracy testing that day, but just showing it's it's pretty easy to uh, to hit 300 yards steel, no problem uh, with it, especially with that one to six uh, scope on it. Um, so I made some some changes, uh, a change, I guess I should say. I uh, put this cheese grater on it, um, hopefully to alleviate some of the heat. Um, I think it, it may help a little bit. I know AKs get hot when you shoot them. Uh, it's just part of the thing. But this gun seems to get extremely hot. And I did notice that when it gets hot, you do start definitely seeing the groups widen up a little bit. So I have two gas tubes here. This one is off of my Sega 223 um, that's been converted. Um, just happens to have a cheese grater on it also. I noticed a, a few differences, like the PSA one here has uh, these little weld rivet mark looking press marks, not sure. Sega doesn't. Sega also has this little extra tensioning spring on it here. The PSA doesn't, which it doesn't need it. It, it is pretty tight. Uh, just, I was not happy or impressed with the uh, PSA furniture. This, the handguard, I wasn't really happy with it either. So I was going to throw a, uh, had a spare Romanian dong um, that I was going to throw on it just to change the look up and, and see how it did. But I ran into a problem. So if you're somebody who likes to switch out your, your furniture on your AKs, which I switch mine up from time to time just to give it a little bit of a different look, I'll show you the uh, issue here. If I can get the little tuner lever flipped over. So this is a uh, Plum uh, Russian AK-74 Plum lower handguard. Um, heat shield's missing out of it, but there's the, the proof stamp there. It is a Russian. So here's the difference. So, uh, you guys can, can see there these little ears that stick up a little higher um, on the Russian gun. Kind of a comparison of the two. So because of these, they will not fit in the rear trunnion. If you look, or I'm sorry, the front trunnion. So if you look the space there between the trunnion and the receiver, notice the rear trunnion is flat and how narrow um, that space is. And we'll take a look at the uh, Sega real quick, kind of a broken down skeleton look of it um, but you can see there's much more space I can stick my finger in there between the re receiver and the uh, front trunnion and you can also see the trunnion's got those slopes cut into it on the Sega so again this is a Sega rifle that's been converted so um, that was kind of a bummer. Um, if you're gonna use some of your other furniture, you're gonna have to, to modify it to, to where it will fit only with this gun, um, which is not typical, I would say, because normally you can switch it out AKM, AK-74. Um, the furniture will switch out pretty easily. This is the top handguard that goes with that uh, plumb lower um, and this is the PSA and you can see these are, are are pretty much identical not a lot of difference there um, so anyway that was a, a little bit of a, a bummer there I'm just not really impressed with this PSA uh, furniture it, it gets really hot really easily and this gets really flimsy um, when it gets warm so enough of that Let's move on, see the uh, wear again, 1,000 rounds in. The um, bolt tail, light up here where we can see. 
Uh, bolt tail has not moved at all. That's a thousand rounds in and that thing has not moved one bit. So the camming channel looks good. Everything looks really good on the bolt. Starting to see some wear. You know, the carbon build up again. Every round's been suppressed on this rifle. That pin doesn't seem to be moving at all. So it all looks good. Take a look at the bolt here. Let me get my light right there. If you guys can hear that. Firing pin does move freely in there. And I had one of the second gen uh, PSA AK-47s that broke the firing pin twice until we stuck a Romanian firing pin in it. No issues after that. But all the wear here looks good. Uh, if you guys will remember, there was a little bit of a little uh, lip starting to form on the bolt and it's, it's still there. I can't really say it's progressed, but there is a little bit of a build up there. My nail just catches on it. Other than that, it looks good. See the little braided extractor spring in there, and that extractor is super tight, but it does, does move. But again, all that wear looks really good. Nothing, nothing crazy going on there. Same thing with the, uh, the trunnion. See, it, it's looking really good. No, no rolling over, at least in a thousand rounds like they were seeing with some of their AK-74s. Um, it looks good. You can see those uh, M4 style ramps cut into the bullet guide. You know, most AK-47s just have a or AK platforms just have a flat bullet guide there. But chamber looks good. Rear trunnion looks good. Hammer looks good. It's got that braided hammer spring in there. And it did come with a, a nice retainer, a little better than the standard shepherd's hook. So I thought that was cool. Safety does have this little ledge on it, which is nice. It does tend to override. I know I've seen some people talking about how the, the safety will override the little safety stop there. Mine does from time to time, especially if you're really mashing on it, but uh, no big deal there. All the rivets on the gun still look really good. Um, again, those screws have not moved at all. You can see where the safety comes down. It hits that every now and then. If you, see if you get far enough down there. But bolt's not moved. These rivets look good. No issues with those. Those have not moved. That bolt's still in place. There's your bolt uh, release and stop and see if I can find it. Hopefully that's in focus. You guys can see that moving up and down there. But again, all the, all the rivets look really good on it. Um, again, still just getting the wear on some of the parts. Again, I'm not super worried about it. I don't think it's a big deal. I just thought it was uh, a, little, a little soon for that. Everybody gives Arsenal a hard time for their paint job. So I just thought I would mention it. This is the muzzle device that it came with, a bit of a muzzle brake. Again, I never used it. I took it off immediately and replaced it with the uh, OSS flash hider suppressor adapter. It uh, does come with one of the new things we're starting to see where they come with a locking nut to, to lock it on there. So yeah, that's a, uh, a thousand, thousand rounds in. I'm gonna continue to shoot it. Oh, it does, doesn't have that, appears to have just a standard rear trunnion, but I haven't taken that apart yet. 
Um, trigger's decent on it. It's not not the it's not an ALG, um, that's for sure, but it's not terrible. Um, certainly has a nice audible reset. It has gotten better um, over time, but I do plan to uh, take it out and keep putting rounds through it. I don't know how far I'll get with it. Um, but I am going to go do accuracy testing with it as I said I would, um, just because I'm curious. I, I don't expect it to be much better than probably a, a two MOA gun, um, just from what I've seen. Um, if you don't have a rubber hammer for your AK, it's a must. Um, everything locks in there good, and it, it's tight. Uh, and it again it has smoothed up quite a bit we'll throw the throw the bolt in there dust cover is still extremely tight um, so you guys stick around i'll uh i'll be doing some updates on this i've got uh some other guns that i will probably uh Featuring super smooth um, on the channel as well, just doing some more stuff on some optics and and things like that. Probably um, not a whole lot different than what about a lot of other people doing. It's just uh, I don't want to say a normal guy's perspective, but uh, I'm certainly not funded by anyone. It's all stuff that I buy with my own money. So I can certainly give you a uh, unbiased, honest opinion of all the stuff that uh, I'm looking at. And if you guys have anything that uh, you'd like to see and I, I own it, um, then I'll be happy to give you my opinion on it. I appreciate you guys. Uh, if you could share it, help me uh, spread the word. Give me a thumbs up, uh, subscribe, all that stuff that all the YouTubers say. I appreciate it. And uh, you guys have a good evening. Until next time. Thanks.